Welcome to Math 0314 uh, online. We're going to go through each of the chapters here. Um, this would be equivalent to if you were sitting in class and watching, um, taking notes. And I encourage you to treat it as such. A um, couple things here before we get started. I am working through this uh, live, and as we all know, we're, no one is perfect. And so, as I work through, if there's you see something that is wrong, you see something that comes out a little strange, um, make a comment, um, and I can edit the video accordingly. Um, I do plan, I, I will try my best not to make a silly mistake, but it, it happens, and when it happens, just make a comment of it. Hopefully, you'll, you'll be understanding this material well enough to realize that when there's an error, when there isn't an error. Um, the other suggestion that I have is um, you don't have to actually sit and listen through every bit. This is going to be, especially with chapter 1.1, it's going to be quite long. Um, I have, I'm looking at it right now, I have about 31 sl slides here. Um, my advice to you is to, this first part you probably want to listen to, but as I start solving problems, pause the video, solve the problem for yourself, fast forward to the where you get the answer and see if your answer matches up with mine. I want to stress that math is not a spectator sport, so sitting and listening to me speak and not taking notes, not working the problems out on your own, not actively participating is not going to result in any sort of success. And one last other point is this is only one medium of exchange that I am providing y'all with. Um, I do plan on giving you guys the opportunity to discuss topics. So if there's something that you don't see, you don't, it doesn't make sense, take a screenshot and we can do, uh, send it to me via email or um, let me know about it and I can uh, post another video explaining it or um, we're also going to be having some web sessions that you can ask the question live one-on-one. -on -one. So hopefully that makes you feel a little more comfortable with what's going on and let's get started. Okay, so section 1.1 is linear equations in one variable. So the first thing they're going to do, and the first part of this is really just a lot of verbiage. Um, what is an equation? An equation is a statement that indicates two quantities are equal. So the big thing here that I want you to realize is that an equation has an equal sign. So you have two parts here, right? And an equation indicates that each of those are equivalent. A solution is a value that makes the equation a true statement. So uh, in the first one, p equals 7 makes it such that if I put 7 plus 3, I will get 11. And if a z is 10, negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. So the solution is what makes the statement true. Now I ask a question down here, which is, how did we arrive at these results? Well, just a quick review, if you don't remember from the previous course, how do we isolate p in the first one? Well, if you have plus, then the opposite of addition is subtraction, so we'll subtract 3. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other, and p will equal... 8. Interesting. Because 8 plus 3 is 11. Ah, see? Already a mistake. So, here we go. This should be 8. Apologize. Okay. And in the next one, uh, how did we get 10? Well, if we do negative 2 times 10, I'm sorry, negative 2z equals negative 20. How do we go about solving this? Well, when you see a number and a letter next to each other, that means they are being multiplied. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we'll divide by negative 2, and z will equal to 10. Okay. So, one thing that you should be doing here when you work through problems is, don't fall for the mistake that I did, substitute your answer choices back in and see that they're true. And notice, I want you to realize I was doing this 
but but I literally just made the silly mistake. Do I know that uh, eight plus seven? Do I know that seven plus three is ten and not eleven? Yeah. Do I know eight plus three is eleven? Yeah. But when you're working through things, sometimes you're you're looking at so many things at once, and you just make a silly mistake. So something else that's very important when you're taking tests, when you're going through, and you're doing things like that. Um, any sort of assessment that's for an actual grade, always go back through. If you have extra time, read through it again. Make sure whatever you put down as your answer is what you is what you think is the right answer. Okay. All right. What's next? Okay. So the next thing we want to do is definition of a linear equation in one variable, and you want to make sure you kind of know what this is because the book is going to ask you, your homework is going to ask you, is it an equation, is it a, a linear equation or not, okay? So what's special about a linear equation? Well, a linear equation is such, is in the format a, b, and c are real numbers such that a doesn't equal to zero. So really, this is a lot of math verbiage, but essentially a, b, and c represent numbers. What I want you to realize is the x is raised to the first power, okay? So if we look at the first example they give us, they said this fits the format a x plus b is equal to c, because a is 3, b is 5, c is 20, and we see that illustrated here. In the next one, it's a little bit, it's trying to be a little tricky, but still we said a x plus b Equal C. All I want to stress is that A here is negative, B is also negative. So this is not really 2x minus 4 equals 6, though it's written that way. What this is really saying is negative 2x plus negative 4 equals 6. And if you recall from the previous course, minus 4 and plus negative 4 have the same value, right? And that's why we have these values written off to the side as such. Okay, does that make sense? The last one, uh, they're trying to scare you again with the form, with the way it looks. But negative five x and six x can be put together, and I get x plus seven equals eleven. Again, realize that if there's not a number written in front, that number is there is a number there. It's one, hence a is one, and then b is seven and c is eleven. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. This is what we really want to get into, which is how to solve equations. Now, we've gone over this before. Uh, you should be comfortable with these. These equations are going to progressively get harder and harder and harder, but hopefully it's not too big of a deal. What I want you to do again is, like right now, pause the video, try to solve the problem for yourself. Once you've solved it, see what I got. If the answer is what you got, then you understand it. If it's not, then watch and see what I did. Also want to stress that in a lot of these, I may solve it in a way that you did differently. If you're getting the right answer, you're probably doing it right, especially as these problems get more and more complicated. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing it your way. If you're getting something completely wrong, then you really do want to watch the video because you're something that you're not grasping. Okay. So how do we go about solving this? Well, let me stop for a second here. Pause the video. Try it on your own. Okay, I'm assuming that you've paused the video, you've tried it on your own, now let's do it together. So, how do I go about solving 12 plus x equals 40? Well, what we want to realize is that technically there is a plus 12 here. So what do I want to do to solve it? You always want to do the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 12 from one side. To balance the equation, I'm going to have to subtract 12 from the other. And I'm going to get x to be 28. Okay. And I encourage, especially if this is an assessment, if this is a test, if this is a quiz, if this is something that is for grade, you always want to plug it back in and see if it's the case. 12 plus 28 is, in fact, 40, so this is correct. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be doing this for every single problem because it's just going to be take up too much time, but that, of course, is always an option. Okay, here's the next one. Again, pause the video, try it for yourself, see what you get, and then compare to me. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've paused the video. How do we go about solving this? Well, again, we're just going to do the opposite. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'm going to add 5 because I want to get x by itself. 
If I add 5 to one side, to balance the equation, I must add 5 to the other. So this gives me x equals negative 6. Okay. Again, I can check it. If I substitute in negative 6 back in here, negative 6 minus 5 is in fact negative 11. All right, next one. <laughs> Again, pause the video, try it for yourself, and see what you get. Okay, so assuming that you've done that, uh, this one's a little different. So there's a couple ways of doing this. The nut and bolts way of doing this is that if you see a number next to a variable, then that means that you're multiplying. So the opposite of multiplication is division. Now a lot of people are going to turn it to say, well, how the heck, well I know this is 1, this goes away, but how do we deal with this? Well remember, when you divide, you are actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're here. Now the next part is people who are not comfortable will multiply across and then reduce. So they'll sit here and say, well, 20 and 45 are both divisible by what, 5? And it gives me 4 and 9. And they'll say, that's my answer. My advice is not to do that. My advice is to go through and say, well, look. 5 and 15 are both divisible by 5, so this will become 3 on the bottom, and this will become 1. And so now on the top I have simply 4 times 1, which is 4, and 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. And I want you to ask yourself, why is that better? Okay, And it really is better, and the reason why it's better is that it's more efficient. The numbers are becoming smaller, I'm multiplying by less. This method here that I did in brown is going to be infinitely easier as the problems get harder and harder and harder. Okay, If I have to multiply huge numbers like I did here in purple, um, it's going to become increasingly difficult. And also, it's going to become uglier, which means the propensity towards making a silly mistake increases. So, my advice, again, is to simply see if you can divide initially. Um, again, here we saw 5 and 15 are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. And that makes the problem a whole lot easier to solve. Okay, going on to the next one. Number 4. Here, again, pause the video if you haven't done so already. Try it on your own, assuming that you have. Okay, so I want to get rid of 2.2 on the denominator. Okay, so Notice that because I'm dividing, the opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply, let me put a star here not to confuse, by 2.2. And what you do to one side, you got to do to the other. So these will divide out. And this is just 2.2 times 4, which is 2 times 4 is 8. So it's just simply 8.8 is W. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Next one. Okay, so here, uh, pause the video and solve. It shouldn't take you more than a second to solve this one. Uh, if I want to get rid of this negative, notice that there's technically a negative 1 here. You can either multiply by negative 1 or divide through by negative 1. And x is negative 6. In other words, anytime you have any letter, let me change the number here. Okay any letter, which by the way is called a variable, right, and a negative sign, all that means is that if you flip the sign, you're good to go. Okay? So here they're trying to scare you with negative signs, so uh, please again, pause the video. If you haven't done so already, try to solve it. Um, what I would do first is I always try to play with the, the signs first, because the numbers are glaring, right? Like, you're not just going to leave it at 6 fifths y equals 3 fifths as the answer, right? But the negative signs we tend to forget about, so let's just go ahead and play with those first. So, um, I could divide or multiply through by negative 1, but essentially I can just drop the negative signs on both sides. 
Okay. And again, I want to get rid of the six fifths so I could divide by six fifths. But remember, dividing by six fifths is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I actually prefer writing it simply as this because you can quickly see that these divide out and these divide out. And on the right side, the nice thing is, let me do a different color, these will divide out. Um, and then 3 goes in, and 6 are both divisible by 3, which leaves me with 1 and 2. So y is 1 over 2. And there's my answer. So hopefully you're seeing that these problems that can look very intimidating are, in fact, pretty easy. Okay. All right, next one. Again, we're dividing by 16. So what would I do? If you haven't figured it out already, please pause the video, solve it for yourself. Um, the opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 16. 16 times 5 is 80. And there's my answer. Next one, how do I figure this one out? So again, pause the video, see if you can figure it out. Um, I want us to draw back to number 5. And what we see in number 5, right, is this problem was originally negative x equals 6. We can drop the signs and we get x is equal to negative 6, or change the signs, right? So the same idea applies here. So we can, if you want to, you can divide through by negative 1, but that just simply means you change the signs, so you're just left with a equals 2. This is where we start to get into more interesting problems. These are uh, one step, these are, I'm sorry, two step equations. So we're in previous problems, we've been just doing one step and we get the answer. Here we have two. So again, please stop the video, try to solve it, and then let's talk about it. Okay, so assuming that you've, got, you've had a go with it, um, the most common way of solving this is you always want to move the number that's not attached to the variable first. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 first. And we're going to get 3x equals negative 8. And then, because I want to get x by itself, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide through by 3. And x equals negative 8 over 3. Okay. So my advice here is to move the isolated number first, right? Really what I'm doing is I'm just combining like terms, right? I'm putting all the numbers on one side. Uh, you don't have to. I, I do want to stress that that's not the only way of solving this problem. So again, it was 3x plus 1 equals negative 7. So if you wanted to approach this problem in a different way, there's nothing that says I have to move 1 first. I could divide through by 3, okay? One thing when you do that, notice I had to divide this by 3 as well, okay? So when, you, when you're dividing by 3, what you're really doing is you're multiplying by 1 third. You're multiplying the entire equation by 1 third. And when you multiply through by a number, you're actually distributing, right? So I'm distributing 3 throughout. And I could get x plus one-third equals negative seven-thirds and then because I want to get x by itself I would subtract one-third from one side and what I do to one side I have to do to the other so x would equal to negative eight-thirds and notice you would get the same answer okay clearly the first way is the more natural way and I would encourage you to do it that way Alright, so pause the video, have a go at this, and I'm going to assume that you've done so. So how do we go about doing this? Again, you could move the 5, multiply, divide through by 5, but I think the natural way of doing this is to, is to add 19 to it through, and we're going to get 5x equals negative 4, and then to get x by itself, we divide through by 5. And x is negative 4 fifths. And there we have it. Okay. Now we're getting into some real equations. So please pause the video and have a go at it. And then let's talk about it. Okay. 
I'm assuming that you've paused the video, you've solved it for yourself. Let's see what we do. So, one universal trait that you can always do is if you see parentheses and you have no idea what to do, you can always distribute. So I'm going to distribute first. I get 5z minus 10. 10 is from 5 times 2 is 10. And on the other side we have 11z plus 2. And so what am I going to do from here? Well, I need to put my letters together and my numbers together. Um, so, let's see here. How do I want to go about doing this? So there's a couple ways we can do this. What I always strive to do is keep things as positive as long as possible. So I'm going to put my letters together. And when I say letters, I mean variables. Right? Um, and so I'm going to subtract 5z. Now, I could have subtracted 11z. That's totally legit. I subtracted 5z because it's going to give me 6z, and that allows me to stay positive. And that's the whole point. And then the next move is I'm going to put move the 2 to the other side. And here I have no choice, right? Um, the goal is to get uh, variables on one side and numbers on the other. And so one of these is going to be negative. Notice that if you had flipped it and moved the 11z over, you would have ended up getting negative 6z and then when you move the 10 over, you would have gotten 12, right? So one of them is going to be negative regardless of how you look at it. I'm going to keep it as such. And then we're going to divide through by 6, and z equals negative 2. And there you have it. So hopefully that makes sense. And let's go on to the next question. All right, so pause the video, try it on your own, and then we will talk about it together. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Now, again, here, um, if you're not certain what to do, you can always distribute. But I'm going to do something a little bit higher level. Okay, so please feel free to distribute, combine like terms, and solve. Actually, you know what? Let me do it that way, and then let me redo it another way that will save a little bit of time. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to distribute 2. So I'm going to get 7 plus 2y minus 6 equals 6y plus 3. And now what I want to do is I want to put my letters together and my numbers together. But first, what I want to do is I'm going to look at the left side. And if I have things that are alike, in other words, like terms, I'm going to put those two together first. I can say 2y plus 1, and on the other side I have 6y plus 3, okay? So I'm going to combine like terms, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my y's together. So I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides. And why am I doing this? Because I want to keep things positive as long as possible. And then I'm going to subtract 3. and then I'm going to divide through by 4. Now I want you to be careful here because a common mistake that students do on this part right here is they put the final answer as sorry my pen slipped they put the final answer as uh, negative 2. Okay, So you have to be careful because your mind always wants to make things as simple as possible but you're dividing through by 4 so if you have 2 on top it makes sense that we must get a fraction. Okay. Now let me show you another way of doing this problem. So I have what? Let me actually let me just pull it up from here. We have one second, please. Problem was seven plus two times y minus three equals six y plus three. Now, one move I could do here, if I wanted to make my life easier, I can subtract 7 from both sides. And I get such. Okay. So, why would I do that first? Well, 
I have two times a quantity, right? Of two times y minus three. The reason why I wanted to do that was I can divide through by two. But you're still maybe asking yourself, okay, so why did I do that? Well, what I saw was that I was gonna get negative four. And if all of these numbers are even, then when I divide through by two, I get something that is a, where the numbers are way smaller and way easier to play with. So this is, in this particular problem, it is not particularly, uh, it doesn't change the game too much. I think it makes it easier still. But, it doesn't make it that much different. But on very difficult questions where the numbers are very big, this is a great move to keep the numbers uh, smaller. So there's a sort of trade-off that I'm doing here, right? So I want you to realize this, and I'll try to show problems in multiple ways so that you can think about this. The initial way, the, the nice thing about the initial way is you're just solving the problem. You just see distribution, you distribute it out. Combine like terms, move things over. And it's just straightforward. The cost, and you're almost, let me put it this way, you're almost working as if there's an algorithm. So you see parentheses, okay, distribute, combine like terms, put stuff that has the same stuff on the same sides. So in other words, put your variables on one side, put your numbers on the other, and then simplify, right? <coughs> Excuse me. You're operating almost as if you're a computer, right? And that works, but the numbers can get big. And so the trade-off is that you're gonna be dealing with bigger numbers. This secondary way, the, what I'm doing is I look at the question and I'm looking for the simplest way possible to solve. So I have to think more up front, but the amount of work that I have to do at the end is a lot less. There's the trade-off. So, um, my advice is if you're very feeling very comfortable with these problems, I want you to try the secondary way of pausing and thinking, hey, what's well, an easier way to solve it? If you're struggling, if this is your first time seeing this, your first time really playing with it, do it the first way. Um, there's nothing wrong. Uh, the, the, the point, and the only point that I'm concerned with is how to make your life as easy as possible with this, right? Okay, let's go on to number 13. All right, so what do I need to do here? Well, hopefully you've paused the video and you've tried it for yourself and now we can talk about it. Um, here, I'm going to just, I see parentheses, I'm just gonna distribute. Now notice here you have a negative, so that means technically you have a negative one and I'm distributing negative one into both. So that's, I think that's the big new step. So I'm gonna be left with negative three X uh, minus 12 plus 2 equals 7, negative x minus 1. Now I hope when I was writing that step out, you stopped and you are like, what? Because I did make a mistake and I made it on purpose. So what was my mistake? The mistake that I made is that this is not negative 12. It's positive 12 because a negative times a negative is a positive. And I did that on purpose because that is the number one place that students make their mistakes. I've been teaching this for a very long time, and that is always where I see the mistake is made. People forget about the sign, so don't forget about the sign. Um, so looking at here that I got about one minute left, so I'm going to stop this video right here, and we will pick it up next time. And I realize there's a limit of 30 minutes on here, so... Um, see you guys next time.